Welcome to The Weekly Option, the podcast for people interested in trading stock options. Each week, we cover trade ideas and opportunities in the stock market right now. Whether you're a beginner, a professional, or just curious about options, this is the show for you. Let's get started. Welcome to The Weekly Option. This is episode 155 on February 27, 2021. I'm your host, Eric, and in this week's show, we will cover the trades from last week on eBaying International Holdings, American Airlines, and Halliburton, and we discuss three new trades on Fisker Inc., Uber Technologies, and Carnival Corporation. Now, it's always great to hear from listeners. If you have any questions about the trades presented here on the show or even about your own positions, feel free to email me. You can reach me at eric at theweeklyoption.com. That's E-R-I-C at theweeklyoption.com. I've also created a short video series to teach you all the basics of option trading that you'll need to know to be able to follow along with me on this show. You can visit our website and click on the videos tab to watch them or visit the YouTube channel for the weekly option. And as a side note, I created a new sort of updated training video. I'll be posting that to the web. It's already on YouTube. Uh, but I'll be posting it to the website soon as well. Now, this week, the U.S. equity markets took a bit of a breather with both indexes finishing the week lower. The Dow Jones Industrial Average lost 561 points, ending the week at 30,932 points. The S&P 500 index fell 92 points, ending the week at 3,811 points. And now it's time for the topic of the week. The topic this week is high probability trades. So I always consider the theorem in physics uh, called the conservation of momentum. And essentially that theory just says that objects will continue in their direction. Objects with momentum will continue in their direction. And I've always considered that in the market. So I've always preferred to trade with the trend. I'm a bit of a trend follower in the markets. So in selecting trades, I typically am trying to identify stock that are that's operating in a discernible trend and that has option prices that are favorable to some of my own rules that I've developed for myself. Now, the options I buy are typically already in the money, but undervalued. And the options I sell are out of the money and ideally paying me enough to make it worth assuming the risk in case I'm wrong, right? Which is why I... Typically, I'm selling spreads or, uh, uh, you know, covered uh, option trades, not just naked options. Now, I found that trading in the direction of the trend has led for me personally to the highest probability of successful trades. And of course, you're going to lose. You guys have seen me lose on trades on this show for sure. There aren't any guarantees in trading. However, I've realized a while ago that this style has fit well for me. Now, some traders are really good uh, counter trend traders. Uh, We call them contrarians sometimes. I've I've worked over the years with a number of contrarians who were able to just, you know, these are the guys that would do things like go out and sell Tesla or short whatever other, you know, high flying uh, stock is rallying at the moment. Uh, These people, you know, that's that's like their superpower. They're really good at that. It always looked like when I tried to copy their style, I would just lose money. So it just never worked out for me. And so that's sort of like another another like another uh, piece for this topic of the week is that it's important to find your style and find trades that support your style rather than trying to match someone else's style. So for me, it's been all about identifying trends and making option trades that will benefit if the trend continues. And of course, if the trend stops or pauses or something and I lose money, I'm com- completely prepared to lose a little bit of money and move on, ba- move back into a profitable position by making an adjustment to the trade. So you guys see me do that week in, week out. Thank you so much for listening to the show. So let's go ahead and get into the trade review of last week's trades. And this week we'll start off like usual. We'll start off with the uh, the covered call on eBang, and I hope that's being pronounced correctly, E-B-A-N-G, International Holdings. Uh, symbol is E as in Echo, B as in Bravo, O as in Oscar, N as in November. The stock 
at the time was trading for $11.06 per share. I looked at buying stock and selling that March 12 and a half call at $2.80, which could give us a maximum return of 38.34%. Well, the stock this week fell $4.16 per share, ending the week at $6.90 per share. The option we sold fell $2.30, leaving us with a net loss of $1.86 per share on the week. And it's been a while since we had one of these covered calls completely blow up, and this is always a risk with this type of trade because the stock itself is only hedged by the amount of money that you collect when you sell that call option. Now, uh, as an adjustment, I would definitely look at rolling the strike lower on this. So you can buy back the March 12 and a half call that we sold and then turn around and sell the March 7 and a half call at $1.20. That would immediately drop our loss to $0.66 cents, uh, per trade. And if the stock were to rise to $7.50 per share, our total loss would be six cents per share. Plus, of course, what you know, whatever fees you've paid along the way for transactions. Now, even simply reducing the loss down to 66 cents would be a win after the current mark uh, mark to market loss of one dollar and eighty cents, uh, one dollar and eighty six cents per share. Now, the good thing is that there's still time to maneuver this trade and execute a recovery adjustment. There's th three weeks left in March, so. If you were a true believer in the upside of the stock, you could even look at moving it out to the next month. You could look at selling the April 10 call at $1.30, which could still create a possibility uh, to reduce the risk today, of course, and still leave some cushion to lock in a little more upside of the stock rallies, which would create your profit. Now, on this show, I'm not a fan of dragging risk into a new month. Uh, I like to keep it clean and keep it all in one month, but... Sometimes that makes sense in managing a position for maximum profit. So just remember when you're when you're trading and you're managing your own position, sometimes, you know, doing things that I might not do on the show are, are it's best. It makes sense. You know, that might mean carrying the risk into the next month. Um, I remember years ago, a good buddy of mine shorted Tesla. He he's never believed in the company and the the short went in his face. So he sold puts. And then he, you know, the next month the stock rallied some more, so he sold some higher strike puts. And then the 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 stock rallied some more, so he continued selling puts all the way up until I think it took him four or five months before he finally was even on the trade, as far as the amount of money he lost in the stock and the amount of money that he had collected by selling puts. He carried that risk into the future just to get back to flat. I'm not advising that, but that was just the way that he chose to manage his position, um, and it worked out for him. All right, let's get into our second trade, which was the uh, the credit spread on American Airlines, symbol A as in Alpha, A as in Alpha, L as in Lima. At the time, the stock was trading for $18.68 per share. I looked at selling the March 18, 17 put spread at $0.36, cents, which could give us a maximum possible loss of $0.64. Cents per spread. Now, American Airlines stock rose $2.26 per share, ending the week at $20.94. The out of the money put spread we sold is now even more out of the money, which is great. The spread could be bought back, it can be repurchased for 16 cents, leaving a profit of 20 cents on the week. Now, of course, we wouldn't buy that option spread back with stock at, the, at these levels. We are currently $2.94 out of the money. So ideally, this spread will expire fully worthless, allowing us to keep the full amount of premium that we collected for selling the spread. This one is working out so far, and so we have uh, you know three weeks to go. I wouldn't uh, make any adjustments. And then our final trade from last week was the debit spread on Halliburton, symbol H as in hotel, A as in alpha, L as in Lima. At the time, the stock was trading for $20.20 per share, and we looked at buying the March 1920 call spread, paying $0.63 cents per spread, which can give us a maximum return of $0.37 cents per spread, or 58.73% return in four weeks. Well, Halliburton stock rose $1.63 per share, ending the week at $21.83. 
the in the money call spread that we bought is now even more in the money. And if you were to sell the spread at the midpoint of the posted values right now, you could probably sell it for around 75 cents, which would give us a profit of about 12 cents per spread. However, just as in the last one, we know that this spread will be worth $1 per spread if stock stays above $20 per share. That would leave us with a gain of $0.37 cents per spread or nearly 59% return on your capital. So this was a nice trade for the week too. You definitely would not look to make any adjustments, um, uh, certainly not a against the spread that you've already got on because it's working and you definitely want to take in the maximum amount of profit for it rather than cutting your wins early. All right, so that's it for the trade review from last week. We lost on the covered call, but we earned on the credit spread and the debit spread. Let's look at some new trades this week. And like I said, there's three weeks left in the month of March. Uh, oddly enough, there are only two days, uh, really one day, uh, depending on when you're listening to this, left in the month of February. This year is already zooming by. I don't want to speed up time for you, but you know whatever your goals were for 2021, if you have not uh, started on them, started taking action towards them, uh, now would be the time. <laughs> the clock's ticking. We're only one month away from finishing first quarter of 2021, if you can believe that. So, all right, let's get into the new trades. Going to look at a covered call on Fisker Inc., the car company Fisker. Uh, symbol F as in Foxtrot, S as in Sierra, R as in Romeo. The stock ended the week at $28.50 per share. I'm looking at buying stock and selling that March 29 call uh, at $4.10, hoping for a return of 16% in three weeks. Now, you enter this trade by buying stock for $28.50 and selling the March 29 call at $4.10. This trade makes the most money if stock prices finish above $29 per share. The break-even price on this trade is $24.40 per share. And in real terms, the stock purchase would require $2,850 and you would collect $410 for selling the option. Our next trade on the week is going to be a credit spread on Uber, Uber Technologies, symbol U as in uniform, B as in Bravo, E as in Echo, R as in Romeo. Uh, the stock ended the week at $51.75 per share. I'm looking at selling the March 52.53 call spread at $0.33, cents, which could give us a maximum loss of $0.67. Cents. Now you enter this trade by selling the March 52 call at $2.62 and concurrently buying the March 53 call for $2.29. This is a credit spread because we're selling the spread, and this trade makes the most money if stock prices stay below $52 per share. The break-even price on this trade is $52.33, and in real terms, you would receive $33 per spread that you sell, and you'd have $67 at risk. Our final trade on the week is a debit spread on Carnival Corporation, used to be Carnival Cruise Line, symbol C as in Charlie, C as in Charlie, L as in Lima. The stock ended the week at $26.75 per share. I'm looking at buying the March 26, 26 half call spread for 33 cents, which can give us a maximum return of 17 cents per spread, and that equates to about 51 and a uh, 51 and a half percent return in three weeks. Now you enter this trade by buying the March 26 call for $2.56 and concurrently selling the March 26 half call at $2.23. This is a debit spread because we are buying the spread and this trade makes the most money if stock prices stay above $26.50. Now the break even price on this is $26.33 per share. And in real terms, you will pay $33 to enter this spread and your maximum gain is $17 per spread. So that's it for this week's show. Thank you guys so much for the emails I received. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, definitely check out the new training that I created. It's posted on YouTube. I hope to post it to the website soon. And uh, that's it. Thank you for sharing the show. And as always, happy trading. Thank you for listening to the Weekly Option Podcast. 
please subscribe to our show and visit us at www.theweeklyoption.com. Disclaimer, there is a very high degree of risk involved in trading. The indicators and strategies described in this podcast are for educational purposes only and should not be construed as investment advice. For our full disclaimer, visit our website at www.theweeklyoption.com.